All right, guys, let's jump in right into your top talkers for the day. This one very cool. Researchers are analyzing the speeches of President Ronald Reagan to look for early signs of Alzheimer's. That's right, President Reagan was diagnosed with the Alzheimer's disease in 1994, but were there signs that the disease was present during his time in office? Researchers at Arizona State University compared the speech of both Reagan and President George W. Bush to determine if a change in speech patterns could point to early stages of the disease. Now they found subtle changes in Reagan's speech patterns. The use of repetitive words, substituting nonspecific terms such as thing for specific nouns, and a declining use of unique words. This was all from President Reagan's speeches late in his career. Now, President Bush, however, showed none of these signs in his speech patterns that they analyzed. Researchers say that early detection is vital in the treatment of Alzheimer's. Now, the disease can take up to 20 years to develop in the brain, making it vital for doctors to discover and treat it as early as possible. All right, well, another big revelation on the entertainment front now did Vin Diesel just drop a bomb? Will there be a Furious 8? That's right, Furious 7, not even in the theaters yet, we're talking 8. While promoting that highly anticipated Furious 7 on Jimmy Kimmel Live this week, the actor may have alluded to the addition of Kurt Russell's character as part of some cool secret things in the wings. Now, in the same way that Jason Statham's character at the end of Fast 6 teased to a much bigger role in the next film, Russell's character could mean another film on the horizon in the Fast and Furious franchise. Of course, millions are anticipating the film for the posthumous performance of Paul Walker, who was tragically killed in a car accident in late 2013. In case you're wondering, Furious 7 hits theaters this coming Friday. Well, another highly anticipated event right around the corner, of course, is Coachella, the popular music fest held in the deserts of California. But if you are headed out this year, folks, leave the selfie sticks at home. That's right, the festival is just the latest in the string of events and destinations that are banning the use of selfie sticks, or as Coachella calls them, and I think it's the best phrase ever, narcissistics. While it was unclear why that they uh, were banning this device from the event, it may be due to the fact that polls are potentially unsafe for those around the user. Another popular concert, Lollapalooza, has banned the device as well. Additionally, the Palace of Versailles outside of Paris, Britain's National Gallery in London, and the Colosseum in Rome have all banned selfie sticks, stating that they need to protect the exhibits on display and ensure the safety of visitors. The Ultra Music Fest in Miami also prohibits the device warning concert goers on Twitter about bringing in those narcissists. Narcissistics. It's a fun one to say. They stated on Twitter, quote, they will be turned away and will probably make fun of you. The decision is a welcome one for many concert goers who say that those devices make it distracting and very difficult to see the stage and enjoy the show. Well, while the selfie stick seems to be losing its popularity, the leafy green kale keeps gaining popularity. So much so that you can now find it at Starbucks. That's right, guys. Starbucks has just recently announced uh, that they are adding kale into your coffee. We're not talking about it being into your coffee, rather. The retailer announced yesterday that it will be included in a new menu option for their Evolution Fresh Smoothies. Starbucks acquired Evolution Smoothies back in 2011, which offers guests a Greek non-fat yogurt-based smoothie with cold-pressed fruit and vegetable juice. So far, the smoothies are available in Washington, Alaska, Oregon, Northern California, and Idaho, but they will be rolling out over half the retail chain locations by May. No word yet if they're going to be hitting Albuquerque yet. We'll keep an eye on that for you. Now, the move is the latest in Kale's evolution as a trendy superfood. Other major eateries are looking into incorporating it onto their menus as well. McDonald's, that's right, McDonald's is rumored to be adding it to their salad menu, and Jamba Juice recently added Kale to its menu as well. All right, well, while kale uh, is a very healthy superfood, apples are another one. They may also be a popular fruit for your smoothie, but having one a day apparently doesn't necessarily mean that it keeps the doctor away. A new study published by the Journal of American Medicine Association reveals that apple eaters have just as many doctor visits as those who ate few or no apples at all. The fruit is a good source of vitamin C, packs an average of 100 calories, and provides nearly 20% of your recommended daily dose of fiber. However, a preliminary analysis of apple eaters had slightly fewer visits than apple avoiders. But differences disappeared when researchers took into account weight, race, education, health insurance, and other factors that influence a trip to the doctor. 
Now, at the end of the day, the study reaffirms the fact that a diet rich in a variety of foods is what is important in staying healthy, not just focusing on one food group. And that, folks, is just the start of what we're talking about now on Tucasa Style. More when we come back.